Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I know your ears are itching now because of how we ended yesterday. Now, can you see someone say, how, how can you even imagine to even think that the Bible is our problem? Praise <laughs> God. Oh, we'll get into that. But before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Let's call forth our daily bread. Are you ready to release your faith? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, sometimes um, it's difficult uh, titling this message. So we'll just give it a general title. The challenge comes when um, you're trying to look for a particular statement or something I talked about. And like the, 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 um, the title doesn't really explain. That's why I tell you, listen to this broadcast every day. Just listen to it every day and get everything you can get. And then when you have time, just take the whole series and listen again and again and again. There's always something to learn. There's always something to grow in. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just thank you today. Your word is truth. And we seek to hear your word. Expressly, Lord, reveal yourself to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So we are still talking about when the rain comes. Now, I was sharing with you yesterday, you know, funny enough, these are things that hinder the flow of what the benefit, the flow of benefits you get from the rain. You really don't want to be, or you really don't want to be there that the Spirit of God visited or the, the, the rain came and you still remain the same. That's what I was sharing with you yesterday. Not because it is God, but because your mind has been limited. You have hindered yourself by the thinking of your mind. So I said something yesterday. I said, a lot of people that we read about in the Bible didn't have a Bible, but they did so well walking with God. Now I know you will come for me and say, how do you know they did so well? Maybe, yeah. you see, there are lots of things we shy away from us as ministers. And as God's children, we shy away from them because they are the difficult areas. We don't want to go into them. So we just feel, look, just take it as it is. But then you find people who grow in knowledge. The moment you start developing in knowledge, you want to start asking questions. And so we have issues where people begin to ask questions and no one is giving them answers. And then what happens? It becomes a situation of, oh, it seems you people are just deceiving yourselves or you people are just deceiving us. You don't have answers to these things. But the truth is, there are answers. There is nothing that does not have an answer. But when we lock ourselves to only the answers that we think have been given, and then we tell ourselves that, Outside these, we can't get anything else. Then we shoot ourselves on the foot. Now that's what has happened to a lot of people. You know, you find people who were serious with God at some point. And, and now when I say serious with God, truly they were serious with church. Not, they were not serious with God. Yeah, there are lots of people like that. They were serious with church, but they were not serious with God. There are people who love the church but they don't love god there are people who know the church but they don't know god how can you know the church and not know god there are many people like that they are committed in church but they are not committed to god see 
So they will rather fight God if God is touching the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? If, if something is happening and, and it doesn't flow with what they, the system that they see. You know, for example, you read these things in scripture and this is the reason these things are written for us, to, for us to learn from it, not for us to make it a standard, for us to learn from it. But the moment you now lock yourself in and make it a standard, knowing that the God the Bible is talking about, He is still alive. Now I keep saying this, God is still alive. How do you lock Him in a book? I hear preachers say it sometimes with so much compassion and, and I, I, I just wonder. They say anything that you cannot explain from the Bible is wrong. Now, I understand their thinking, but then is that really, really true? There are two ways I want us to look at this. Number one is this. Do you even understand the Bible enough? Because you see, I found this out to be true. And you, as you grow, you, you will discover this. No matter how high you grow, you will keep realizing one thing. The Word of God is true. Now when I say the Word of God is true, what God has said is true. And then also you begin to realize that it is men that have twisted the truth and made it look like what is not true. Now, not because they were wicked. In some cases, they were wicked. In some cases, just pure ignorance. I can give you examples and examples of these things. So, so you find people who quote certain things and then they say the word of God said this. But then you know, by the time you look at it, you know, and, and that's the problem, a lot, of, a lot of people don't examine even the Bible, they don't examine the scriptures. But why do we examine the scriptures? Why do we search the scriptures? Jesus made reference to this thing one time, and I think I want us to look at it. Remember I talked about yesterday not opening the Bible. Today let's open the Bible so those who are accused uh, they will not have what to accuse us of today. <laughs> it's so amazing. John chapter 35. John chapter 5, excuse me, and verse 39. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Now this is Jesus speaking. It's written in red, okay? So, Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think. Now, now I want you to understand what he's saying. Because sometimes we use these statements in, in different ways. So someone say, oh, Jesus said, search the scriptures. Jesus was not saying search the scriptures. <laughs> he was reprimanding people. I'm, I'm trying to get your mind to loosen up so that you would understand God for who he is and not be limited. See, the rain is coming. If your mind is not expand, is not expanded, if you if I don't, if, if God doesn't expand your mind, listen, you will fight even your own blessing. So you read this and say, Search the scriptures. Oh, Jesus said we should search the scriptures. But that's not what he was saying. Jesus was saying here that search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me and you will not come to me that you may have life. Okay. What's Jesus saying here? The, the New King James puts it this way. You search the scriptures because they need. So he was talking to the Jews. He was talking to, talking to a particular people. And then he now said, you guys, let me just paraphrase it. And, and this is the truth about the statement Jesus made. You guys search the scriptures because you think 
in the scriptures, you will find eternal life. And that statement alone should make you look at the scriptures again with a different or better light. Okay? You search the scriptures because you think inside the scriptures you will find eternal life. But what do you find in the scriptures? You don't find life in the scriptures. You don't find life in the scriptures. The scriptures will not give you life. At best, if you want to follow Apostle Paul's teachings, it will kill you. <laughs> yes, yes, I say the Bible might, might be our problem because it kills. Paul said the letter kills. What do you have here? The letter. It kills. <laughs> it kills. Why does it kill? I'll tell you why it kills. When you, the same thing Jesus was saying now, see, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think inside it you will find eternal life. But meanwhile, what the scripture does is to testify of me. But you're unwilling to come to me to have life. The scriptures gives you the signpost and gives you the direction to where you receive life. But you hold on to the scriptures and you say, I must get life here. The one the scripture is pointing to you is there giving life to people. But you hold on to the scriptures and say, no. See, that's the same problem Jesus had with the Pharisees. Jesus was here fulfilling the word of God in their midst. Yet, they were find, trying to find him in their scriptures. And they couldn't find him. They couldn't find him. So everything he said became offensive to them. They accused him. Who do you think you are? Now, the scriptures spoke about this one, that he is coming. Do you know why they missed Jesus? I'll tell you why they missed Jesus. Because they were looking for life here. Are you understanding what I'm saying? They forgot that the one who gave the scriptures is still alive. They didn't go to him to give them the interpretation of the times and seasons. The same thing we do today. When you hear people, brethren, preachers, say things like this, that if you cannot show me in the Bible, then forget about it. Now, God says, I'll do a new thing. Okay? I want you to think. God says, I will do a new thing. God says, eyes have not seen, ear have not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has planned for those who love him. Okay? Now, I come and I said, this is what the Lord is saying to me. And they're like, show me in the scripture. Oh, no. He said, I have not seen. Ah, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Okay. But that's what the scripture says. So the same thing Jesus experienced. I'm here to give you life. No, the scripture is, is where life is. What does the scripture say? The scripture testifies of me. And they look at him. It can't be you. <laughs> it can't. So what exactly were they looking for? The same thing that happens today. Where is the place of the Holy Spirit in your life? I hear preachers even say things like, we can't just trust people walking and saying the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said. How? Thank you, Jesus. He just held my mouth from saying something. <laughs> Praise God. Because sometimes, you know, ha, when you get into... Ah, now, these people are honest and sincere people, just like the Pharisees. Many of them were honest and sincere. Many of them just hated Jesus because of the, the, the evil in their own heart. The same thing we have today. Human beings all over the world that all over the world are the same. Just different color of skin, different tradition. But you see, their capacity to reason, their capacity to do things is purely the same. So they hated Jesus. They will hate you. 
you're from Africa. You will realize that even in Africa, you have people like the Pharisees and Sadducees that attack Jesus. Even in Asia, you will find them. In, 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 in Europe, you will find them. In America, you will find the same kind of people who reason the same way. This is the truth. And guess what's happening? Old bottles trying to force new wine into them. And Jesus said, it will not work. If you don't renew your mind, you will hinder the benefit of the rain that God is releasing. If you don't open your heart, I said something earlier, where is the place of the Holy Spirit in your life today? Where is it? Have you noticed when Jesus left, I'm talking to the body of Christ. When Jesus left, he didn't leave us with the Bible. There was no Bible like this, like we have it now. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We didn't have it. When Jesus left, he was careful to leave us with the Holy Spirit. He said, wait till the promise of the Father comes. And what's that? Wait till the Holy Spirit comes. And now the Holy Spirit has come. Because there was already a form of godliness see even the early church um, did that thing of trying to pattern their system you know somehow they borrow from here they borrow from there and they began to do things and and soon enough it slipped into the same old thing where you find this in the church where people in the church born again full of the holy ghost or born again having the holy ghost maybe not full of the holy ghost began to act like the pharisees so you you find peter going by the holy ghost to preach to colonials and when the news got to jerusalem some people were not happy hey okay Maybe our brother have done something wrong. I didn't read that they called the prayer meeting to ask the Lord, what means, what mean is this? I, I, I just imagine they waited for Peter to come back. And when he came back, come, send for him. Brother Peter, we heard the news that you went all the way to a gentle man. And guess what, Cornelius was rich. So it's natural to think, ah, Peter is backsliding. He went to look for a rich man because of the money he would collect from. And that's the same thing that happens today. And Peter had to explain himself. Now, I'm thinking, while that was going on, I'm thinking, when the news came to them that's, this is what Peter had done. They didn't know who Peter was. If they knew Peter, would they just, would they just naturally throw it away that Peter must have done something wrong? Or did, did, did they say, wait, we know Peter. Peter will not do something that the Holy Spirit doesn't tell him to do. So can we just pray and ask God what he's doing in our day and in our time? The Holy Spirit would have ministered to them. But they waited for Peter to come. When Peter spoke, okay, 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 okay. Well, are you sure you didn't lay hands on them? No, I didn't. Did you pray for them? No, I didn't. Are you sure? These people were there with me. Uh -huh. Okay, now imagine what they had plans to do to Peter if they had found fault in him. These are believers. The same thing the Pharisees were doing to Jesus. It's the same thing we find today. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. If we are to walk in the level that God desires a plan for us, there's a lot of things we need to change in our minds. We need to be real to ourselves. We need to truly 
walk with the Holy Spirit for who he is, not who they have painted him to look like to us. The Holy Spirit is one every one of us can experience. Every one of us can experience him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My time is up. <laughs> it's good. But I'll leave you with this. The Holy Spirit is here today. Don't let any man cheat you in all the benefits that you can get from the Holy Spirit. Don't let any man use religion to hinder you. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.